I actually cried over fettuccine Alfredo, over wanting it so badly one night. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Allison, if you're new here, and today I'm doing a first trimester recap, kind of sharing all the symptoms I have, the wild ride that was the first trimester for me. It was not a fun couple of months for anyone in our household, so I was really thrown off by that. So if you are new to my channel, I normally share homemaking content. I do like room makeovers and DIYs and fun cleaning and organizing and decluttering projects. So if you like those kinds of videos, make sure you're subscribed for more and also for more pregnancy things coming out. I'm starting to sprinkle this in a little bit more with my content because it's my first pregnancy, my husband and I's first pregnancy. And I remember specifically looking up all of these like pregnancy videos and first trimester videos while I was going through it. So hopefully this video helps you. I do have a lot of things on my phone. So if I'm reading that, that's what's going on here. I broke it down by weeks mostly, but then towards the end of the first trimester, I was not as strict with it. So I kind of just wrote down random notes of like random things. So into the pregnancy things, that's literally what this note is titled, pregnancy things. <laughs> So week three, so we found out really early on that I was pregnant, like probably like the first day possible that I would get a positive test. I actually have a whole video here where I took a test one day and wasn't sure if it was positive. I took a test the other day and then actually found out that day I was pregnant. So if you wanna watch that whole thing, it is linked here. But um, nothing too crazy happened that week. I remember watching these YouTube videos of like early symptoms of pregnancy, trying to figure out if I was or not. And um, I had no, no, no symptoms, like nothing really happened, except I was extremely tired and taking naps throughout the day. But I'm almost 100% sure that's just because I stopped drinking so much coffee. Normally I drink two to three cups of coffee a day. And then once we thought that I could be pregnant, I decided to cut that out cold turkey. And so I think most of what I was feeling was just caffeine withdrawals. So week four, we know that I'm pregnant. Um, minor nausea, nothing as serious as it would get till later on. And then the first thing that started to really change was that I didn't want coffee first thing in the morning. Like I would wake up, feel a little bit sick, and I immediately wanted to eat food, which is not normal. Like I'm normally hungry and eat breakfast every day, but I normally wait like an hour or two. But first thing that I needed to do, like starting week four pregnancy, was I had to eat. Week four, I also started not sleeping through the night. Like I would wake up to go to the bathroom or something, and then I would just be awake. I'm pretty sure that was more so like me just being anxious and thinking too much about this whole situation than it was about like a pregnancy insomnia thing yet. Cause that comes later on. But I feel like in that first week I was just like anxious about the whole situation. Um, the only other thing I wrote was exhausted and napping through this week probably still from the caffeine withdrawals. Week five, I finally ordered some of those preggy pops. I wasn't feeling like truly nauseous yet, but I was so excited about buying the pregnancy things. This is the first thing I thought of. I was still waking up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, which normally I never do. And week five, I also got the first dose of the vaccine. A little bit controversial. I don't want to get into this too much. We made an educated decision, my husband and I together. And so week five, I got the first dose with no symptoms afterwards of the vaccine. And then I wrote nothing until week eight. So I guess kind of the same things like for weeks five, six, and seven, like just minor nausea, things getting slightly worse. And then I have for week eight, I got the second dose of the vaccine and that knocked me out for an entire day. I was taking the like most I could safely take of Tylenol because I had like major body aches, major vomiting. I had been nauseous up to this point every day and like not really active, but I had never thrown up until this point. But I remember waking up the day after I got the second shot and immediately was vomiting. So that was not a fun time, but I will say like going eight weeks into pregnancy without vomiting, kind of the big win in my book. So up until this point, I was really nauseous. And honestly, this couch right behind me, I was horizontal on it for most of the time. I was not posting on YouTube very often. Like I was just not capable of doing as much. Smells are really bothering me. And the only food that I was interested in eating was carbs. So pastas, I actually cried over fettuccine Alfredo over wanting it so badly one night. Um, thankfully my husband stepped in big time. And once he realized how hard it was hitting me, he took over the grocery shopping, the cleaning, the cooking, all of that stuff. He stepped in and filled that role. And even though like my full-time job is like YouTube and being home and taking care of our house, I could not meet the demands of that in the first trimester. It was that big of a struggle every single day with just exhaustion and nausea. And the only things that really helped me were sour candies. So I had those preggy pops. 
um, extra sour like um, gummy worms and whatnot. I also really loved having lemon in my water. So I went through phases of just like chewing on lemons throughout the day just to get through the day and get the taste out of my mouth. So week nine was an exciting week. So we had been keeping the pregnancy to just Krishna and I up until this point. Maybe one or two other friends who live in the area found out about it just like coincidentally because I just couldn't function and do like normal social things. Christian's family was actually coming to visit us and we were holding out to tell family in person. So we told Christian's family during week nine of pregnancy and they were here for a weekend. It sounds so bad reading these back, but week nine I wrote spontaneous vomiting. I would just be sitting on the couch or just eating dinner or laying in bed and then out of nowhere be like, yep, I'm gonna go vomit right now. And it would just come over me in a wave and then I just needed to let it out. And so that would happen, a, not a lot. It probably happened like a handful of times, like three, four, five times. But it was weird because I was starting to lose like the nauseous feeling, like the constantly feeling sick feeling that was passing. But now this like wave of like, oh, we're gonna be sick right now would happen. So it like moved from like always feeling nauseous to like, I'm gonna vomit and feel better. And then like not feel nauseous after this. So like, it wasn't that bad. It was still gross. It wasn't the worst situation. I would rather like be spontaneously vomiting like that than just feeling constantly nauseous like I was the weeks prior. Uh, week nine, once Christian told his family, he started getting really more excited about this. Not that he wasn't excited before, but I feel like we started like really feeling like we were, oh my gosh, we're having a baby. Christian's parents were buying us baby things because my family still didn't know at this time. So we started getting really excited. And um, to end the week on a high note, Sunday, we came home from church, started getting car sick. So I threw up in the car. And that was not fun, but it was like one of those things, like I wasn't feeling nauseous, just spontaneously got sick in the car. Not a fun time, do not recommend it. All of our cars now have little doggy bags in there just to be safe that that does not happen again. So week 10, I wrote slowly feeling better. I don't need to eat immediately in the morning. Like I used to eat like three or four little mini bagels the second I woke up just so I didn't feel like I was about to like lose my entire stomach even though nothing was in my stomach. And I think coffee started sounding more appealing. There were some days I could like take a little sip or two and then some days that I didn't because I did cut it cold turkey in the beginning just to like lower the caffeine intake that I was normally used to. But after the caffeine withdrawals passed, coffee was not appealing. Like the smell of it disgusted me. And I think week 10, I was starting to feel myself give a little energy back and coffee little by little, like it was hit or miss. Some days it was a yes, some days it was a no, but I could tell things were getting back to normal. Week 11, starting to feel myself again. And it's hard trying to transition back to normal day-to-day -day things I used to do. So like I said before, Christian took over like everything in the house and we made it as easy as possible for our house to function. Like I have enough clothes that I don't need to do laundry every single week. So I did laundry twice a month for those first couple of weeks. And we switched to just paper plates and paper bowls just so we didn't have to wash as many dishes. Well, so Christian didn't have to like go to work a full day, come home, feed us, and then clean up dinner. We just like did as many shortcuts as possible. But when I started feeling better, I was kind of like in the rut of, I was always laying down all day doing nothing. And it was getting kind of hard to find the motivation to like get back into my normal routine. I also think that I was still pretty tired during these times. Like I wasn't feeling as sick every single day. And when Christian came home from work, we could hang out and have a normal day. But like, I wasn't up to like putting up two YouTube videos a week like I'm used to and doing the grocery shopping and everything that I had done before. Week 12 was an interesting week. So Christian was actually gone on a work trip for 10 days during this time. And I was feeling a lot better. So he felt good like leaving me for 10 days. Like he knew I could feed myself. I remember I would go get Panera for lunch like every other day just to get out of the house and like just to go talk to somebody at Panera basically. But that was fine, I felt good about that. And then there was one weird day, it did not happen to me before. Um, I woke up in the middle of the night, started getting sick again, just out of nowhere. And I'm like, that was weird, I'll go back to sleep. And then I woke up a little bit later and I had a piece of toast. I'm like, I can keep down a piece of toast. And then that came back up and like nothing would stay down. I couldn't keep water down, I couldn't keep food down. It was a little bit scary and I just felt awful that day. And so I was calling the doctor that day too, asked like, hey, should I be concerned about this? I asked if they could squeeze me in because I had a, an appointment a couple days after this. They basically told me that just to go to the ER if I was concerned about that. And I just did not feel up to going to the ER by myself. I did not want to do it. So I probably should have gone in hindsight. I hadn't had any fluids in me. I weighed myself after the first day. I lost like five pounds just like in water weight from that one day of just vomiting so much. 
So definitely not a healthy thing, but then slowly I was just like using resources and websites online of like what to do, how to start eating after like having food poisoning basically. And I don't think it was food poisoning. My doctor didn't think so either. She thought it was just like another spike in my hormones. It was just a really bad day for me. Things slowly got better a day after that, but that was a really miserable, miserable day. Like that was awful. And Christian was gone and he felt bad because he couldn't do anything not a fun time so it's like weird like this roller coaster like things get better and then things get much worse and then things get better and then things get worse and a fun thing for week 12 on a, on a lighter note is i finally was ordering new skincare products so i love to do my skincare i love to take care of my skin i've had a lot of hormonal breakouts along my chin since i basically turned like 21 i never had acne as a kid got it crazy bad as an adult and I've just been kind of managing it on my own. And my like holy grail product is different, which is like a really strong retinol basically. And that is definitely not pregnancy safe. So when I cut out coffee and all of that, I cut out my super harsh skincare, which was really challenging because I love it. And I was so scared my skin would immediately freak out to the max without it. And surprisingly, my skin was so good for the majority of pregnancy. It was clean, I wasn't breaking out. Like The only thing I had to deal with was if I like, didn't wash my face for like two or three days, which definitely happened when I was feeling awful on the couch for weeks at a time. Like Then I would have like one or two little breakouts, but it was like clearly just from not washing my face regularly. So it was amazing to see all my hormonal breakouts like disappear overnight. They've popped up a little bit more, but like nothing terrible. So for me, like people say pregnancy makes your skin freak out. My skin was already freaking out before pregnancy and pregnancy somehow just calmed it all down. So knock on wood, it stays this way. It stays nice and clear, but that was awesome. But this week I finally decided to like buy some new skincare because all that I had been using was like washing my face and a basic moisturizer. So I bought like a vitamin C serum that I've been using every day and really enjoying that and kind of just bought some things that I can still use throughout pregnancy and like enjoy things that I used to, if that makes sense. Like. Washing my face was not a fun process when I was not feeling good, but when I started feeling more myself, I wanted to have more skincare products just to do like a little self-care routine. I'm also out of breath right now. I'm talking a lot. I don't know if it makes sense, but once I started feeling better and like getting back to the things that I used to do before the first trimester hit me really hard, I like wanted to get like find like pregnancy safe alternatives to things that I used to enjoy. So pregnancy safe skincare or pregnancy safe workouts, like those kinds of things, incorporating those back into my day made me feel more myself. And then another thing that I needed to start doing that I did not do week 12 was I really needed to start buying new clothes. So none of my jeans or anything that had like a zipper and a button, none of that was closing after maybe week eight or nine. Like I just was super bloated and it wasn't even like there was baby there, it was just bloat. <laughs> So I was living in sweatpants. Honestly, Christian's sweatpants fit me perfectly during this time and even right now, but I needed to start buying some more pregnancy clothes and that took me a long time to do for some reason. I was like in denial that like, oh, I can just put off buying pregnancy clothes. Like my stuff will work enough. Like I can just make it stretch. And I'm like thinking to myself now, like that's so stupid. You're gonna be pregnant for so much longer. And then after you give birth, like you're still gonna look pregnant then. And then if you get pregnant in the future, you would use it again. So. This is when I started buying things that were pregnancy approved or like safe pregnancy. So like pregnancy skincare routine or like building a pregnancy wardrobe. Like even this dress from Target just came in yesterday because dresses are amazing when you're pregnant because you don't have anything on your belly really. But I digress, that was week 12. Moving on to week 13, I had an OB appointment and I guess I should say how my doctor's appointments went. That probably would be helpful. So I went to the hospital at four weeks pregnant to do a blood test. And I figured they would call me, but like the military hospital, they're not doing anything extra that they don't have to. So I heard nothing back from the hospital to after my blood test, like no one called and said like, congrats, you're pregnant, here's the next step. I was kind of just like on my own. So I was just calling phone numbers and trying to figure it out. And eventually I got an appointment for my week, at week nine, technically. And my period is like way off and funky. So technically they wouldn't see me until I was 10 to 12 weeks pregnant is when they do the first dating ultrasound, at least for my hospital. But technically my period made it really where I was only nine weeks when I went in. So I went into the doctor, had a great appointment. Christian was able to come in with me and we had the first ultrasound appointment, which went great. We had an awesome doctor. And then she dated the baby at nine weeks exactly at, the, at that appointment. And then she said that she wants me to like come back for my 12 week appointment just to get me back on track because my hospital will do every four weeks like for the majority of the pregnancy so 12 16 
So I came back in week 13 for like my 12 week appointment, but I had called in too late and there were no more appointments until the 13th week, if that makes sense. So I had that appointment um, with the OB and I had a weird nurse who like was telling me that I was not supposed to be there because I already had the dating ultrasound and then like it was just a very weird experience. The doctors that I've experienced have been all lovely, but like the nurses and the administration have been all over the place in a hot mess express. So just kind of go in there with an open mind and a lot of patience when you're going through these hospitals, especially if you're military. Patience is key for all of this. Week 13, tons of blood work. At this point, they had been taking like vials and vials of my blood every single week and I had never given blood before. So I was really nervous about that part of things, but I honestly feel like I'm a pro now. It doesn't freak me out, like it's not fun, but like I am not stressed about it at all. And I've gone in to give blood now four or five times throughout this pregnancy. And I'm sure they're going to just keep taking more and more as this goes on. But week 13, feeling better, still that random vomiting thing. Like there was one morning, we, Christian and I were just sitting down here having our, our normal coffee because I could start drinking coffee again. We normally like it black, but I found that when I put in like a milk or almond milk for my case, I liked it a lot more because it cut the bitter taste, even though normally I like the bitter taste, but milk in my coffee has been a go-to. But one morning, Christian and I were just down here doing our normal thing week 13 and I was just like, excuse me, I have to go do this right now and then just got sick and then felt better. So it's like weird random things. I haven't thrown up in like maybe a week now or two weeks now and I'm currently 17 weeks pregnant, but focusing on the first trimester, I'm getting off topic. Um, I'm still feeling weird about being productive again. I don't know how to do it. I'm struggling with balancing it. Ordered a bunch of new clothes and bras cause that's something that definitely changes sizes when you're pregnant. We told my family when they were in town to visit that week too. So now everybody knew that we were pregnant. I think two weeks after this, when I shared it on YouTube. Um, my other notes was I ordered a bunch of saltines and noticed that some foods were making my nausea better or worse. So it wasn't that I was feeling super nauseous every day, but I had triggers that made it worse. So dairy made it 10 times worse for me and more processed foods are super sugary foods. So I was avoiding those as much as possible. And then I could really manage my um, nausea from that, but it was mostly just trial and error and just random things. Like Chick-fil-A sauce was fine, but honey mustard sauce, no way Jose. Muffins one week were like the only thing I wanted for breakfast. And then suddenly one day I had a muffin for breakfast and that made me so sick. And I just couldn't have a muffin after that. So it was like weird random things that like just changed suddenly on like the drop of a hat. So the best advice that I have for dealing with the nausea is one, relax and learn how to do deep breaths. I'll link an article down below that I found when I was really sick that time Christian was away and it just taught you how to do deep breaths to kind of control the nausea. Cause it's all like a mental thing or not a mental thing, but like your brain is what makes your body feel nauseous. So if you can control or like calm down your brain through deep breath exercises, that can really help. And it sounds like mumbo jumbo, but trust me when you're desperate for anything to make the nausea feel better, this helps a little bit. Another thing that also really helped the nausea was just super bland food. So like just plain bagels, saltine crackers, those normally went down pretty easy. Filled my stomach up to help like avoid being nauseous from being too hungry because that's another weird phenomenon. I would be nauseous when I didn't have food in my stomach, but I would be nauseous after I had too much food in my stomach or if I ate the wrong thing then I was nauseous. So like, it's all a guessing game. I struggled through it. I got through it. <laughs> But the whole time that I was going through it, I'm like, how am I gonna do this again for any future babies? Um, week 14, I guess that technically can still be the first trimester. We had our gender reveal ultrasound. We went to a third party ultrasound place and for like 40 bucks, we found out the gender of our baby. I will be sharing that soon. So stay tuned and subscribed for finding that out. We're just enjoying having some little secrets to ourselves. Like before we told our family we were pregnant, Krishna and I really enjoyed it being like our little thing. Like we didn't have people giving extra advice or extra input or like families commenting on it. Not that it's a bad thing to have that, but it was nice to just keep some things to yourself. And so right now we're keeping the gender to ourselves a little bit. And that's the last week I have under the first trimester recap. If you guys are still hanging with me, I have a couple of products that made my first trimester way easier if you wanna hear about them. I will go through this list pretty fast. Um, number one, my pregnancy pillow, like that big giant thing you see people talk about. Totally, totally worth the hype. I love mine to pieces. Um, <laughs> new bras and clothes that actually fit. I have had one or two meltdowns about putting on a dress and feeling like I was a stuffed sausage that was spilling out of my casing. Super weird description, but that's just how I felt. Like it was not a good dress to put on. I definitely felt fat and like it was a bad time. 
So buying clothes and bras and things that actually fit your growing body and like work with your pregnancy will make you feel better, will make it easier on your partner from not hearing you complain about how fat you feel all the time. Lemon water when you're feeling really sick, sour candy, green apples, and this sounds super weird, but having protein first thing in the morning made me feel less nauseous during the day. So if I could stomach sausage or eggs or anything that had protein in it, I would try to get that in first things. Like most of the time that was not happening and all I could do was like a bagel and butter. If like my body could like take in protein, I knew that I would be feeling so much better so much later on in the day. So like protein really helped, but there were definitely times where protein was not something I was willing to eat. I also have saltines written down and basically all of the snacks. Um, after that car sickness episode, I got really scared about getting sick in the car because we go to a church and have a lot of friends that are like 30 minutes to an hour away from us. So we are in our car driving a ton. So now whenever we go anywhere, Christian knows this too, we just grab like honestly like four to five different snacks and I always have sour gummies in my purse. That way if I'm like feeling nauseous in the car, eating can really help just like tone it down. So I don't go anywhere without snacks ever, not really because I'm hungry, but because it's an easy way for me to like fight any waves of nausea. I also have that deep breathing technique. It sounds really silly and like, I'm not one to be like the yoga, like deep breathing exercises normally, but when you're desperate for relief from your nausea and just trying to get through the day without vomiting, some of these exercises are really helpful. I also loved doing foot baths with um, Epsom salts. I bought this special like pregnancy bath salt that's supposed to have a magnesium and everything in it. And it was 16 or $17 for this little pink bag. And then I realized like regular Epsom salt is the same exact thing and you can get so much more, so much cheaper. But putting my feet in a bath with Epsom salts, whichever kind they were, really helped ease the nausea. It was very temporary and only lasted like the couple of minutes that I was soaking my feet. But I will say that when you're feeling as awful as I was at some days, like any reprieve, even just for like 10 or 15 minutes is worth trying. So doing salt baths, even just keeping my feet in warm water helped me feel so much better when I was feeling really, really sick. And then the last thing I have written down are apps. So I have a bunch of pregnancy apps. I'm sure lots of you have seen these too. My favorite is the what to expect app. It basically just shows you the size of your baby and just like fun little facts about it. That's my favorite one. I also have The Bump, Pregnancy Plus, and Obia Pregnancy. All of those are fun to look at and like whenever you like turn a new week of pregnancy, it's fun to read all the updates and see how big baby is or what baby is developing or working on. So those have been really exciting and like fun things to learn about and to become more knowledgeable. I also bought the uh, What to Expect When You're Expecting book and I read that. Very, very helpful. Basically all of the information I can take in, I've been trying to take in. And I don't wanna ramble your ears off any longer. I'm sure this video is gonna be like 30 minutes already. That is a wrap on my first trimester. It gets better. If you're struggling through it like I was, just keep reminding yourself you will get through it and it will all pass and it will get better. And even if you are one of the unlucky few that struggle with it through the entirety of your pregnancy, like when the pregnancy is over and you deliver your baby, it will all be gone and it'll all be worth it. So just kind of keep telling yourself that. I had to definitely remind myself of that multiple times a day just to get through it because it's so miserable when you're in it. But even being at 17 weeks pregnant and like feeling like I'm far enough out of like the nausea and the exhaustion of the first trimester, I'm already thinking like, oh, I can do that again in a heartbeat for another baby. Like obviously I could do that again. It gets so much easier once you can step out of it and it will get better. I promise you it will get better. And I'm not a doctor or anything. I'm just sharing some encouragement that I definitely needed to hear from some of the YouTube videos that I watched during my first trimester struggles because I was watching these videos when I was feeling my lowest. But I'm gonna quit rambling. Thank you all for listening to this video. Make sure to subscribe to stay tuned for future updates and all the baby things coming out and also all the house updates. Friday's video will be a storage room declutter transformation makeover. We have basically a hoarding closet upstairs that I'm finally going to sell a bunch of things, declutter a bunch of things. I bought a bunch of stuff from Target to organize in there. I'm gonna do matching labels. It'll be a whole cute thing, but that'll be Friday's video. So stay tuned for that. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.